metropolis of the Chinese province of Yunnan, in the southwest of this enormous country. The city of everlasting spring, in which a mild climate and the great outdoors are part of everyday life. Those who come here are given a warm welcome by the city's inhabitants. Although located 2,000 meters above sea level, Kunming is a typical southern city. Each day, women of various ethnic groups offer a variety of goods for sale. This small trading center on the southern section of the Silk Road has prospered fast and now has a population of four million. Both its climate and unique location made this city the ideal choice for the International Expo, held on the northern edge of the city in 1999. Following the expo, many exhibits were retained and include numerous temple complexes typical of various regions in China, a popular attraction to the present day. The expo's exquisitely planned gardens are also featured and it is here that one begins to understand how the province derived its name, Yunnan the land of Shangri-La. The Buddhist temple of Ikan Ton Si dates back to the Tang dynasty. The design of the city's largest temple complex was influenced by many diverse ethnic groups. The highlight of this magnificent temple complex is a lake in the middle of which a number of bridges lead to an octagonal pavilion. Total penetration is a tranquil and peaceful haven amid the busy alleys of Kunming's old town. Fascinating part of the city's cultural life are the evening dance performances provided by numerous folk groups. They offer a good insight into a variety of Chinese cultures. At least 17 ethnic minorities live in Yunnan, some of them originating from obscure tribal communities. are diverse. Their love of music and dance is enjoyed by one and all. Next we travel away from the western mountain region, passing by farmhouses in which local farmers cook geese in traditional stone ovens. Past skillful stonemasons, whose skillful hands create the famous stone lions. Finally, we arrive at the western mountain of Xishan and ascend it by cable railway. 
higher and higher into a treeless region of pure fresh air and almost total silence. summit, we walk through the Dragon Gate of Luan Yang, from where the long and arduous descent down the steep steps of Buddha Hill can begin. Here, between 1781 and 1853, Taoist monks constructed steps on the hill's rocky slopes, and also a group of small temples that contain an assortment of images of Buddha. Magnificent views across Dian Lake at the foot of the mountain include glimpses of numerous temples that nestle among the rocks and was once the scene of sacrificial rituals. Temples loom larger and larger, earthenware images of Buddha depicting various stages of life and still worship today. foot of the western mountain is the floral temple of Hua Ting. It contains a small pond surrounded by bamboo and pine trees. In 1036, a prince of the Nanjiao realm had the main hall and four side buildings constructed that contained more than 500 statues of Buddha. But Yunnan's most famous site is situated 126 kilometers east the unique stone forest of Shi Lin, a forest of rock that extends for 27,000 hectares. Its limestone rock originated from a long since dried up ocean. The elements finally created these bizarre formations. and romance are usually included in legend. It is said that one of the immortal Taoist priests presented this desolate area to two lovers. The peaks of the stone forest are up to 30 meters high but the exhausting climb is rewarded by outstanding views. Small pools reflect the intriguing stone needles and huge rocks that were created during millions of years of natural erosion. formations were given dramatic names. The Sea of Fire, Dragon's Tooth and Heavenly Sword. 
Pagodas, columns, and strange flowers appear to rise from the rock. To facilitate access, tunnels and paths have been cut into the rock face. A circular path leads to the most beautiful vantage points. It is particularly during sunset that the alluring charm of the stone formations is at its most impressive. Venice of the Far East. This is the name of the ancient Chinese city of Lijiang in the northwest of Yunnan province. The picturesque center of the old town of Dayan is an architectural gem. Three rivers and several small creeks flow through the historic area of the city. Various splendid stone bridges date back to the Ming and Qing dynasties. Dayan, Lijiang's old town, consists of a network of canals and streets. It originated at the beginning of the 12th century during the Song era. Dayan's houses are of traditional stone, wood, and roof tile construction. The serene atmosphere in the alleys of the old town is ideal for a relaxed stroll. They contain many colorful pictures. Lijiang is also the center of the Naxi, a Tibetan tribe that has a long and impressive culture. Today, local folklore and traditional costume play an important role in this region of China. The Naxi are proud of their cultural inheritance. The Dayan Orphanage makes an indelible impression on all who come here. The radiant faces of the children hide the fact that even here, life is not without its problems. At one time, the Naxi were a nomadic tribe, but several centuries ago they discarded their wandering lifestyle and replaced their tents for wooden huts in the Lijiang Valley. After settling here, they cultivated buckwheat and rice and became successful horse breeders. Diane's present-day marketplace is full of inscrutable fascination. The fine architecture of the old town provides visitors with a sense of harmony and contentment. The foot of Lion Hill in the southern part of the city is the exquisite entrance area to the Mu residence. This complex, that owing to its vast dimensions is almost a city within a city, is surrounded by an array of magnificent buildings.
just as in Diane's old town. This elegant and spacious residence continues the customary harmony of Chinese architecture. Each of the Naxi monarchs originated from the Mu line of descent during the 470 golden years of the Yuan, Ming and Qing dynasties. For 22 generations, life in and around Lijiang was dominated by this family, until in 1723, the Qing dynasty appointed its own government and thus put an end to the Mu era. Today, the water wheels at the northern foot of Lion Hill symbolize the traditional water mills of this region. When evening comes, this residence is an attractive setting for the reenactment of age-old rituals. Naxi text, known as Dongba, consists of both illustrated and phonetic letters, one of the few such writing systems still in use today. The Mu residence also features traditional music and dance performances, carried out with all the authenticity of bygone times. Jiang is the Jade Temple of Jufen Si and a group of musicians and dancers. The Naxi tribe is very religious and the gods influence their everyday life. They frequently visit the temples that they consider to be sacred. monks maintain the temple and monastery gardens in which 40,000 camellias blossom in amazing splendor from March to June. A photograph beneath this 400-year-old camomila tree is said to bring marital contentment. is a typical village of this region, just as it was hundreds of years ago. The farmers slowly lead their ox wagons through the village. The houses were built over a period of more than 200 years, between the Ming and Qing dynasties in 14 and 16 AD. are built of stone. The houses are immaculate and it is normal for the local people to wear traditional costume. The Yunnan 
common area around Lijiang is inhabited by most of the members of the Naxi tribe that has a population of almost 280,000. They have their own culture, language and religion. Thanks to China's high regard for its ethnic minorities, this ancient tribe has been able to maintain its age-old traditions to the present day. Long Tun Park is north of Lijiang's old town. It contains the palace of the Black Dragon that, according to legend, protected the waters of the lake in times of drought. In the center of Dragon Lake is the Moon Pavilion that is accessible by way of a bridge. It is said that this was the place in which two desperate Naxi lovers burnt themselves alive. exudes harmony and serenity and captivates visitors with its impressive views. Following a three-hour drive northwest through enchanting avenues and remote mountain areas, we arrive at a natural spectacle that is quite breathtaking. Wo Tiao Sha, Tiger Jump Canyon. Access is by way of a precarious road built into the rock walls. And deep down, nothing but raging green water. has cut deep into the rock of the Jade Dragon Mountains and created a canyon that is unique in the world. The Yangtze is the country's largest river and ends in Shanghai where it enters the China Sea. The less energetic can travel the steep and narrow steps in the relative comfort of a sedan chair. The mighty summit rises around 3,900 meters from the ground below and is a spectacular setting for this incredible experience. The tempestuous water flows with relentless power through the 30 meter wide canyon that is blocked by a huge rock. derived its name when a tiger making its escape from the royal hunt saved itself by jumping across the canyon. This is the conclusion of our journey in Yunnan, in which an historic metropolis prospers and various ethnic minorities have survived. A place of exquisite culture and spectacular natural wonders.